It's uh, Dr. Jill live here for your questions and answers this Friday afternoon. I don't know what part of the world you are in, but it is gorgeous, sunny, 60 some degrees outside here in Colorado. All the snow that we got earlier this week is starting to melt. The uh, roads are clear and gosh darn it, I was so tempted to go take out my motorcycle this afternoon for a ride in the sunshine. But um, that will have to wait because I'm here with you to answer your live questions. Super excited about this. Um, let me get my feet on so that I can see your questions and answers. Say hello, tell me where you're from. Um, as I'm getting that up, I'll just tell you just a little bit about me and where to find more information. You can find um, all kinds of blogs and information and so many um, good, good things that I like to put out there on my website at jillcarnahan.com under the blog. Um, every week we have a new article and I actually do take requests from you guys if you have topics or things. Lots of times I'll write about um, MCAS or mold, of course, or Lyme disease or co-infections. But if you have things you've been wanting to hear more about, um, recently someone asked about hair loss and women, acne treatment. So go to jillcarnian.com and, and the blog and find lots of great free information there. Um, if you haven't signed up for my free mold guide, I've written a, I don't know, maybe 12 page document on how to uh, get started if you've had mold in your house or mold detox, and you can find that as well. Um, the link, the easiest thing is just Google Dr. Jill Carnahan free mold guide. It'll come right up and you can download it there for free. Um, there's recipes on my website too. Funny thing is I don't cook a lot. So um, a lot of these recipes I get from my colleagues and friends, and I've certainly tried a lot of them and they're usually friendly to Dr. Jill because we don't do any gluten or dairy or sugar. However, I have not tried every single recipe on my site. So if you have a question or have some feedback on the taste or something you like, please feel free to share on the recipes, um, your favorites, and also let me know more of what you want to see with recipes because I'm always experimenting and asking my nutritionist um, colleagues and friends for more great information. So today, again, in the feed, I'm gonna get this up in just a second here um, so that we can, let's go here, uh, so I can see your live questions and answers. Okay, getting that up. Hey, Taylor, hey, uh, Nancy Lynn, hey, Susan. Hey, Brenda, awesome. Um, please just put your um, questions in the, in, the, um, in the comments there and I'm gonna read through. And then I always get other questions during you know, office hours and things. So I will um, go to other questions as well if we uh, run out of things to say there, but feel free to put them in. Today, I'm only gonna be here for 20 or 30 minutes, but I'm gonna really try to make this a regular thing every couple of weeks. I love connecting with you here, love hearing from you. Um, I'm always so appreciative. Many of you, as I've done Facebook Lives, have put in the comments, hey, Dr. Jill, you know, love the content. So um, I really do appreciate because I know that um, you're out there, you're listening, and um, I hope I can continue. I really enjoy this. I love talking to you, even though it's through a screen. Um, I hope you can hear my heart. And I love answering questions um, live. That's one of my favorite things to do. In fact, it's funny, you know, I do lectures for other physicians. And one of my favorite things to do is like live Q&A after the lectures. Um, I don't know what it is about that live feed. I just, I really get excited about answering the questions because it's in real time and hopefully it's helpful um, for you guys as well. So I will start to uh, read. I've got a few questions coming in. Yeah, tell me if you're there, if you're listening, where you're from. Of course, this will be recorded. You can also find all these uh, interviews I've been doing on my YouTube channel. I'll put the link in today, but it's just YouTube. YouTube and Jill Carnahan, and you'll see the, um, the feed or the stream of Dr. Jill live interviews. Those are the ones I've been doing since like a year ago when COVID hit, and um, lots and lots and lots of great content. Dr. Richard Horowitz, Dr. Dan Kindelier, Sarah Morgan, Shalise Pratt, um, uh, Nicole um, Krakora, Hoffman, just on and on and on. My friends, my colleagues, some great content, go in there, find some information that's helpful. There's stuff on MCAS, there's stuff on mold. And I've interviewed a lot of the ICI board members there. So um, come in there, hang out, listen. Um, I'm also podcasting, guys. So you can go to YouTube, you can go to Facebook, you can go to my new podcast, which will be live with all these episodes. So that if you're in your car or on your run, you can hear all this stuff for free. Um, and if you haven't followed me on Instagram, please, please, jump on there, hit follow with love because I love to share fun uh, studies, content. And that's where you'll see some of the personal photos of my puppies, me in Halloween costumes. I was Rosie the Riveter this year. 
So you never know what you're going to find on Instagram. <laughs> Hopefully lots of good content as well, but you never know. I might throw in a dog picture there as well. So like I said, hi, Susan. Hi, Tony. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Vinette. Uh, hi, Christine. Okay, so let's jump into some of these questions um, while I'm here. Um, and like I said, I think stay tuned for Fridays around four o'clock because when I can get here on Fridays, it won't be every week, but maybe every other week, a couple times a month. Um, I love doing this. I hope to see you here. So it looks like we've got lots of people tuning in um, from Tampa Bay, Florida. Um, Brenda, so first question here, can you tell us which supplements um, from your site you like to use for Bartonella and Babesia? Have I had success using Quicksilver, Artemisinin for Bartonella or just Babesia? Oh, Brenda, this is a great question because as you guys know, if you are a family member or friend is suffering from Lyme or co-infections, this is a tricky area. You know, it's funny, I've been doing functional medicine for 20 years and I remember years and years ago being like, I don't treat Lyme disease <laughs> because I wanted to protect patients' guts. And I thought, oh gosh, if I get into that, I'm going to have to use antibiotics and I don't want to do any harm. So I really was very resistant. And like many of my colleagues, um, what happened is I started to see patients that weren't getting well and I found out they had Lyme disease. And because I really, really, truly desire to help patients get well, I no longer had a choice, right? Just because I didn't want to treat Lyme disease, I didn't really have a choice. So I dove into the literature. I did um, uh, lots and lots of education with some of my favorite colleagues and experts in the area. If you haven't seen my interview with Dr. Richard Horowitz, please go. I don't know what episode it is, but it's on the YouTube channel. It's here on Facebook under videos. Go and watch that. And my most recent one last week with Dr. Dan Kindler. These guys are experts and they always teach me so much. So all that to say, I, the last decade have gotten into Lyme disease and co-infections. And as you well know, if you're experiencing it, Brenda or other people, anyone out there, maybe family, friends, it's an epidemic. It is epidemic. And there's so many reasons in the environment and otherwise, um, and it's an under um, tested and understood thing. But what I always think in functional medicine is there's this chronic infectious burden and toxic load. And these two things play together, together to create chronic illness, infections, disease, um, lack of resilience, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, et cetera, et cetera. So often at the root there is infections and toxicity. Okay, so on to your question. So the um, couple of things, I do use drugs. I use usually triple cellular antibiotic therapy, something like a um, doxycycline, Zithromax or clarithromycin with rifampin or um, rifibutin. Um, and then I usually add malarone or mepron to that so that I'm covering all of those organisms. It takes a little playing around. You really have to combine intracellular agents to get efficacy. And then if I can get that load down over six to 12 months, I will often try disulfiram. Disulfiram is not as effective for Bartonella. So sometimes we'll have resistance and then we'll need to use some creative things like methylene blue or clotrimazole or other things for Bartonella. That's the drug side. I don't always use drugs, but they are effective in some people, and I'm no longer afraid to use them as long as I'm doing the detoxification, the gut support, all of those other things that are really critical. Now, herbal things, there's about three or four main lines of um, nutraceuticals that I like for Lyme and co-infections. Beyond Balance has an alcohol-free set of tinctures that are absolutely excellent. They have mast cell stabilizers like mast ease. They have um, stabilizers for the um, viral load. Um, they have immune stabilizers, they have cyphocalm and some of the other immune inflammation calming agents. Those are particularly good in PAN and PANDAS patients, and I really like that line. Another line is um, Byron White. Byron White is, um, again, these tinctures that have um, different funny names related to, you know, ABAB, ABART, um, AL, and some of these related to Lyme and co-infections, really like those as well. And then Nutramedics, one of my first companies I used and one of my favorites, they're more single herbs and they can be incredibly effective. My go-to one-two punch for Lyme, um, if someone's fairly stable, is Cemento and Banderol, and these are all from Nutramedics. They've got a lot of other agents as well. They have EB, um, H6, they have A-V, they have um, Kina, which is an anti-malarial, they have Hatoinia, which is an anti-Bartonella, and I will combine all of these different sets of things, and sometimes people need multiple 
um, layers. CellCore is another great line out there that's doing some good protocols for parasites and for Lyme. I have not used them exclusively for Lyme, but um, I do like their binders with the humic and fulvic acid. So that's a huge range. This is not intended to diagnose or treat. I'm talking fast. I'm not intending to give you a regimen to treat yourself. This is absolutely critical that you work with a doctor um, like myself or others out there that can help you design a treatment plan because this is complicated and this is this could be a all day or all week lecture on these different tinctures but those are some of the ones that I use. Nancy asked what probiotics are um, good for people with histamine so I'm assuming she means histamine intolerance and this is a great question Nancy because some of the probiotics like um, lactobacillus casei will actually raise histamine levels um, lactobacillus rhamnosus tends to be neutral and usually the bifido species are actually lowering for histamine so that's a good general gauge one of my favorites that you can find on my website is and I didn't mention this earlier, but all of these products, um, most of them that I'm able to sell to the public, you can find them at drjillhealth.com. So drjillhealth.com, you can find the tinctures, you can find the anti-inflammatories. Um, the new thing that we have, you definitely want to check this out if you have mast cell or histamine issues. It's uh, my brand. It's called Cytoblox, C-Y-T-O-B-L-O-X, Cytoblox. It's a great combination of turmeric and Chinese skullcap. One of my favorite new things for this inflammation and it's great setting if you want to treat Lyme and co-infections to get that patient on cytoblocks first, the dose is around four a day and then get that inflammation down so that the Herx reactions and those things, the histamine reactions are less. Um, so Nancy with probiotics, I'm also a huge fan of spore probiotics. And if someone is incredibly sensitive to those, I will often use a single spore, either thorn bacillus coagulans or HU58. But megaspore, as you've heard me talk about, one of my very, very favorites with spore probiotics, and it tends to do really well with histamine patients that have issues with breakdown of histamine. You can also use a DAO enzyme with your meals to help break down histamine. Um, my favorite there is called histamine blocker. Again, it's at drjillhealth.com, histamine blocker, really effective for breaking down histamine with foods. And then my histocyst, um, also drjillhealth.com, that one is actually more of an antihistamine. So it has quercetin and nettles and bromelain and some of those ingredients. So you can use it almost like a natural Benadryl. So those combinations can be really helpful. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, Susan, um, immune deficiency, is it safe to be around other people during this pandemic? Um, no antibodies and um, after getting the vaccine. Oh gosh, you know, first of all, sorry, Susan, I well know this. I think you've probably heard me talk about my immune deficiency and issues with that. And I've been trying my best to hack that with the PEMF mad and other things that I'm doing. Um, it's a continual experience. I'm definitely better than I've ever been. But those of us who have an immune deficiency, we don't make antibodies. There's different types of immune deficiencies. Uh, mine and yours, Susan, are the kind that don't make the IgG antibodies. But good news for us and everyone else out there too, uh, T-cell mediated immunity is actually a primary method of our immune system to fight the virus and really any sort of infection. So even if we don't have antibodies, we still have another arm of the immune system that works. And they now have T-cell mediated immunity antibody testing. So you, I'm sorry, it's not antibodies, it's just T-cell mediated immunity testing. Um, I think it's called adaptive immunity is the, is the um, kit and it's just T-cell immunity to COVID. So you can actually test this now. I think the test is around $200. You can ask your doctor about that or go to adaptive immunity. I'll try to find the link later since I'm talking to you guys. I can't really search for that, but I'll get it and I will put it here. So check that out, Susan. You might have T-cell mediated immunity. And even if you don't have that on testing, that is an arm of your immune system that is helpful even if you don't have antibodies. So you do have some protection. Christine, um, taking patients anytime for Lyme and Co's. So um, I will tell you guys that I just hired a PA, a physician assistant. She is amazing. I've been waiting eight years to get the right person in with me. This is kind of the first I've really announced it. It'll be coming out in our newsletter. But if you do want to schedule, um, we are taking new patients. So you can be uh, feel free to call the office and schedule um, if you want to see her um, as well. Jennifer. Hydrogen water. Okay, so she's asking if you can, so hydrogen tabs, 
um, hydrogen water. There's lots of companies that make this. I think Quicksilver makes one. Um, I think Research Nutritionals makes one. And these are little tabs that dissolve in water and create hydrogen. And you um, let it bubble and then you drink the water while it's bubbling. And you're actually drinking some of that hydrogen. And when you drink that, that is this universal um, antioxidant. It's like a, uh, a free radical scavenger. So no matter what kind of toxicity or things that you have in your body, it creates um, just pure water as it reacts with that reactive oxygen. So it's a really, really safe way to decrease the oxidative stress in your body. So what I'd recommend with that is to take it at least 15 minutes away from food or drink, probably not right with your other supplements. Um, the only caveat with that is if people do have SIBO really bad and uncontrolled, the bacterial overgrowth, they might react a little to that excess gas in the belly, have a little more gas and bloating, but it won't hurt you. So you typically, I try to treat the SIBO before I do a lot of high dosing. Those are really safe though. You could take two tabs every hour and have a really decrease in inflammation. Um, right beside me here, you know what? I'll just show you guys for fun. Um, one sec, I'm gonna show you my hydrogen machine. I love show and tell. So this is my hydrogen ionizer machine. Um, it's pretty cool. I lay on my mat every morning and put that in my nose and I breathe um, hydrogen ions, which is a lot more powerful than the tabs. Now, unfortunately, those machines are kind of pricey. That one is from High Tech Health. Um, again, I'll leave a link in the um, in the Q&A after I'm done with the, with the live here. I'll put those links all in there so you can come back and get that. But um, all that to say, that's a really powerful way. But what I was going to say is it's it's a few thousand dollars. It's it's not cheap. But um, if you really are you know wanting to invest in that, that's another way that you could do it. It's it's what I use every single day. Really really like that. I breathe it for about thirty minutes, and I'm just going to find that for you real quick. Um, I'm looking right now for the hydrogen inhaler machine from High Tech Health. Um, Vital Reaction, so vitalreaction.com. You can find this and um, you can just, I'm just gonna put the link right in here in the chat box in case you're interested. You don't need the big expensive fancy machine. So guys, don't feel like you have to go out and buy this, okay? There is a lot of other ways. You can get the tabs for very, very inexpensive and it does the same thing. Yeah, it's not as powerful, but it's still the same thing and it'll save you a lot of money. <laughs> so, but just in case you wonder what I do, that's what I use. Um, Hi, Vignette from Bay Area. Any good probiotics from mouth? Um, yes, yeah, so there's a couple of uh, strep species that are specific for dental. And I don't know off the top of my head, I'd have to look them up. But if you look up dental probiotics, I think Jaro might have one. Um, Zymogen used to have one and they don't anymore. It was dental, a probi Probiomax DDS. But if you just look up dental probiotics, um, Jaro is particularly one that's good. And I think there's a few other brands out there and they usually have a strep species and you can chew them or you can uh, gargle them or swallow them. And they really can be helpful if you have chronic gingivitis or gum issues. I'm also a huge fan of biocidin, dental cidin. And so there's a biocidin rinse. Again, you can find these on drjillhealth.com. And there is a dental cidin toothpaste, which I love to use. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually put, I have a water pick in my bathroom and I'll just put 10 or 15 drops of biocidin into the water vial of the water pick. And then I use that every day with my teeth. I found that the water pick is just like something, um, I even have a travel version, which I'm not traveling a lot right now, but I find it to be like one of those things I can't hardly live without. I love my water pick, highly recommend a water pick because it really does get in there between um, your teeth if you have chronic gum issues. Um, this area of our mouth and a microbiome is so critical for chronic disease. And if you have root canals and immune compromise, you're seeding bacteria into that tissue chronically, and it can be a really big inflammatory trigger. My health absolutely improved when I pulled out my root canals and I did, I took care of the cavitations that were there um, from my old wisdom teeth being pulled when I was 16 years old, but it really, really did help. So if you haven't looked with a biological dentist at this area of your bio health and your dental health and uh, tried to do some things around that, it is really critical. I found a certain percentage of patients that I see, they get stuck. And when we take care of the dental issues, and I'm not the expert there, but I know that there are experts, um, biological dentists that you can find to help you and, uh, and again, later, if you come back here and you ask me questions, I'll pop back in. I'm going to try to make sure that I leave uh, all the answers, all the things I mentioned in the chat box. I just don't want to do it now because I'm here with you. Um, Tony asked, does mold exposure reduce lymphocyte count um, even while um, being exposed? 
Also, does the HLA-DR for Lyme make one susceptible to mold? Okay, so um, mold exposure typically doesn't change the lymphocyte count, um, but there is a, a mycotoxin produced by certain molds called mycophenolic acid. So if you've tested urinary mycotoxins, you might have seen that in the urine. Gosh darn it, I've had it myself. If you see that in your urine, that is a known immunosuppressant. They use that in creating drugs for immune suppression in organ transplant. So it's called mycophenolic acid. And if you see that on any of your mold mycotoxin tests in the urine, that's an immunosuppressive um, agent and will definitely cause immune suppression. Really a lot of the mycotoxins, a lot of the T2 toxins, the trichosithines will also be immunosuppressive. So it's very common after mold exposure to have immune compromise and old infections like Lyme or co-infections or viruses pop up and cause issues with people. Uh, the thing that I find though, is it doesn't usually cause a lymphocyte count suppression. That might be something else going on. And then the HLA-DR for Lyme. So the thing with the HLA-DR, we were years ago when I taught, I would you know put a lot of emphasis on it. And I find now it's very binary. Like people are either at, more at risk for not clearing out the toxins with, with the HLA genetic type. What that means is it's like, we have the ability with our immune system to tag something dangerous, like a dangerous stranger to tag it and say, hey, this is a bad guy. And then the body knows because of the tag, the antigen reception, basically the receptor there, um, and then our body clears it. With people with the HLA genetic variants, they have a more difficult time clearing those toxins. And that could include biotoxins from Lyme, as to your question, Tony, or it could include mold toxins or other toxins. And those toxins then circulate in the system like a merry-go-round and they cause collateral damage to the tissues. So they're creating this inflammatory response, this chronic immune inflammatory response and it incites this massive cytokine storm. And just like COVID, what happens just like LPS endotoxemia, which happens in the gut, all of these things have a common pathway with cytokines and these cytokines create damage in the body. They create inflammation. So there's a point of those because those are protective for us. They, they basically say, put the immune system on red alert. But if we're in red alert all the time, as you can imagine, it wears down the tissues. It's damaging to our cells, to our brain, to our immune system, to our kidneys, to our lungs. And that's where we get into trouble with mold and with Lyme disease and really chronic viral infections too, like long haul syndrome. Jennifer, are there health risks to eating microwave food? Um, gosh, I remember back in the day when my primary doctor was a chiropractor and like, I mean, this is back in the eighties and um, we were always warned to never get near the microwave. Um, there is good evidence with EMFs and that's in that spectrum that they do do harm. They do do, they do harm to tissues. And this is a whole nother lecture as well, but it's in the realm of electromagnetic radiation in that spectrum. But the funny thing is, I mean, sunlight, is on the EMF spectrum. So are microwaves, so are ultrasounds, um, and so are all of these other types of, of waves. And these waves do have an effect on human tissue, some of them more damaging than others, like x-rays or some of the high potency uh, CT x-rays. Those are much more dangerous in high quantities. But microwave is on that spectrum. It's a lower potency. Um, it does kill the enzymes in our food. So our food is no longer living when it's been microwaved. However, we live in a world that is what it is and convenience is what it is, right? I still microwave my food at times. Um, ideally, I suppose we'd have a pot with water underneath and you know warm it up every time and that's just not convenient for most people. So ideally, not using the microwave would be excellent, not very practical. And I still use it to some extent when needed. So um, great, great question. It'd be great if we didn't need to use it, but I think most people for convenience still do use it. and. Um, ideally living raw food would be best. Uh, Oscar, hi, what's the best test for mold toxicity in the body? Gosh, this is the million dollar question, Oscar, because I get it all the time. And if there were one test, um, gosh, that'd be amazing. There's not. Um, clinical history is number one. This is not a test, it's free. But if you have a good doctor um, who's trained in mold, who asks the right questions, usually I have a diagnosis with 99% certainty by taking a clinical history, which is free. I also do visual contrast test in the office. You can do this online. And I do a questionnaire, a screening questionnaire. Those three things alone get me to 99% accuracy. Um, the other things you can do are Sears labs with blood work. Um, that would be VEGF, MMP9, TGF-beta, 
um, ADH and osmolality. Some, some doctors will still check VIP um, and then C3A and C4A. Those are kind of the ones that I use. If there's a lot of those that are elevated, it's more likely that someone has an inflammatory response to mold or biotoxins. However, um, it's not diagnostic, it's not specific because all of those markers individually could indicate other things. So it's kind of like a whole picture thing where how many of those are positive and what's the likelihood in addition to clinical history and testing of the environment. Um, urinary mycotoxins, I think most of us on ICI, which is the group of physicians I'm part of that teach and train about biotoxin illness. If you want more information there, it's a nonprofit. It's isei.org, isei.org. Um, and you can find lots of good resources and referrals there. I'm on the board, but it's nonprofit. Um, it's just for good education and bringing information to patients and other clinicians. Uh, but that's a great resource. So what I was gonna say is we do agree that urinary mycotoxins for the most part are helpful, but what that test is, is it's an excretion test, which means that we're measuring excretion, which means if you test someone in the beginning, you find a high mold mycotoxin level, you are treating them and they're excreting because you're treating them, right? If you test too early, you could see an elevated level or an increase in levels. And that's actually a good thing because they're excreting it out of their body. So you just have to know how to interpret it, when to do the test and work with your doctor on that. Vignette, any supplements for hypnotic jerks while sleeping? Um, that's a complicated thing and that's not gonna be a pill fixes it thing. It's gonna be a figure out what the root cause is and there could be multiple, could be infectious, could be neurological, could be inflammatory and could be toxic. And whichever one of those things it is, you'd have to treat the root cause. So there's not like one pill for hypnotic jerks. You'd have to figure out what's causing it. Um, and there's lots of things you could do. It's just a matter of each individual root cause might take a different treatment but great question. Um, Denise, hello. Um, how do you build up protein when amino acids are low? Okay. So, and you said you're rebuilding your gut. This is a great question because um, usually when you have low amino acids or proteins, I've had that before. It's some version of protein wasting enteropathy, hypochlorhydria, or some reason where you're not absorbing and getting the proteins into your cells, like absorbing them from the gut. So one thing I've done for years is take free amino acids. You can find those at drjillhealth.com under just thorn aminos love this product. It comes in berry or lemon. Every morning I put that, I put brain mag, which is also on drjillhealth.com. And I put creatine in a, in a water bottle and I drink that. So I'm getting the creatine for my uh, muscle function and I'm getting the free amino acids to build protein and, and muscle in my cells. And I'm getting the brain mag, which is mag three and eight, which is my private label product and delicious tastes so good. So if you've ever seen me at a, um, a live interview or anyway with my pink drink. That's the brain mag. It's the free aminos and then it's the creatine. And those three make a really great uh, mix. You can also, if you want electrolytes in addition to those things, I've got a, a mix called Dr. Jill's workout essentials, just workout essentials. And that um, has all of those things in one mix with a tiny, tiny bit of caffeine. So it's a great thing to have before your workouts. Hi, Laura, can you estimate what percentage of serious patients are able to get back on their feet after solid home remediation or pretty severe water damage? Hi, ketomium. Oh, Laura, I hope that's not you. Hope it's just someone you're asking for because ketomium is the worst of the worst. I hate ketomium. I used to call it the narcoleptic mold because when I would get exposed, I was vertical. I was just like, I'm sorry, horizontal. <laughs> I was horizontal. I would be like uh, exhausted and need to lay down. I think now that I start to understand it, I think it would create kind of a mast cell activation where I would have a, a, a orthostatic, like low blood pressure and I would need to lay down. I've measured before and my blood pressure has gone as low as 80 over 50, which isn't very conducive for standing upright. <laughs> but all that to say that ketomium for me, when I would get exposed, I would know it because I would be so exhausted. I have to lie down. And I think it was due to blood pressure. So your question though, um, Laura, is you know how to get well and can you get well and how long does it take? My recovery from mold took about 18 months. Now I was making progress along the way, but to really get to maybe 80% better, it took about 18 months. And yes, I mean, I feel like I'm 99% recovered. Um, I can still tell if I get a mold exposure, but I'm much more resilient to bounce back very quickly. So I think it's possible um, remediation is key. So either a very, very good remediation um, with a um, dry fogging after remediation and a fine particulate clean after that. So you do the HEPA vac, the wipe down, et cetera. That's all real critical because that environment has to be free of the dust and debris 
after mediation as well, but I think it's possible. Absolutely, Laura. Hi, Misty. Um, doctor, in your area, well, I always recommend people go to ifm.org, the Functional Medicine Institute, and look for someone in their zip code. Those are um, functionally medicine trained physicians, and they do have specialties and things there and other like areas of interest. So you might need someone who's a gynecologist or a rheumatologist that's in that field, and you can look by profession. Um, ICI.org, which I mentioned before, International Society for Environmentally Acquired Illness, that ORG also has physicians trained in mold and mycotoxin illness. That's a great resource as well, because those docs particularly know a lot more about mold and mycotoxins. Um, hi, Jennifer. Um, the 30-day mold detox kits. Um, oh gosh, thanks for mentioning that. So if you guys haven't seen, I've been, um, you know, obviously I, I can't see everyone out there, but I love to share train physicians is one thing I love to do because it reaches more patients. I love to do these free kind of calls because if I can answer some questions here and help some of you out, great. Um, again, this is not medical advice. Please talk to your doctor before you do any of this, but I love sharing these things with you. Um, and one of the things I did last year in order just to help more people was create the um, Miracle Mold Detox Box. You can find a ton of information either at drjillhealth.com or um, molddetoxbox.com. You can go there, you can read all about it. And what I did is I tried to make up a kit that if someone didn't have a doctor or they were really in dire straits and really sick with mold illness, that they could have like I always joke, it's kind of a terrible analogy. It's like the happy meal for a mold, right? Like it's everything all in one. And what a terrible analogy because happy meals are certainly not conducive to health and vitality. But I think it's funny to say that because it's such a dichotomy. Um, anyway, the Miracle Mold Detox Box, what it is, is, is kind of the very basics all in one in a kit that could last you 30 days or longer um, to help your body detoxify. It's got liver support, it's got NAD, it's got the glutathione, and it has some electrolytes. So it kind of has all of the core support plus a binder. Um, if you haven't done it before or looking for a solution, it's a great way to start. It has all the instructions with a protocol. If you're highly sensitive, I recommend it starting half or quarter doses and working your way up. And the most common question I get is, you know, do, will 30 days do it? Well, of course not. And I wish it would. Um, but for most people, you're going to need more than one, you know, box or kit to continue. But what the, the purpose was, it was just so that you would have everything all in one. You wouldn't have to pick and choose and figure out what to do. It's kind of like a all in one detox box and it works for other things. So if you're just looking for a great detox, this is not exclusive to mold. The same glutathione, the same liver support, the same binders work for other toxic load. So it doesn't exclusively have to be used with mold. But your question, Christine, was Epsom salt baths 100%. I'd actually recommend that you use Epsom salt baths every day if you can when you're doing a detox. Another hack that I do every single night is my Epsom salt baths. In fact, this morning I had a Costco delivery. I had eight boxes of 12 pounds each of Epsom salts sitting outside my door. And I'm sure my neighbors think I'm crazy. They're like, what in the world does she do with all those Epsom salts? <laughs> I always laugh and I'm, you know, this crazy lady on number 201. That's me. But those Epsom salts, I use a half a bag per bath, which is about three pounds. So I go through those pretty quickly, as you can imagine. But I find that to be incredibly helpful for the daily detoxification. And then I have essential oils like eucalyptus and lavender. Love putting those in. And for me, it's this nightly ritual that gets my body ready to fall asleep. And I encourage you to make up your own nightly ritual as well. It really helps your circadian rhythm. And for me, that gives this calming, warm bath. Sometimes I'll read a book, listen to an audible um, book or listen to a podcast while I'm in the bath. Um, okay, I'm gonna answer about one more. Gosh, I, I've got so many questions here. I wanna get to all of you. Dawn, hello, Dawn, bless your heart. Hello, hello. Um, She's wondering, she does have an IgG deficiency and shared that here, so I can say that publicly. And um, she's asking if the vaccine will still offer some protection. Um, likely yes, because again, you can get a lot of T cell mediated immunity response from the vaccine as well as, as antibody. And so that is likely even if you have combined variable immune deficiency or low Ig, you can still get a response that's uh, protective from the vaccine. 
Um, okay, Lizzie, you saw Facebook Live last week about the PEMF mat. Yeah, so if you haven't seen, I did a really short kind of an impromptu with the founder of Higher Dose, which is the mat. I'm going to show you guys really quick. I've showed this before. I just tipped my computer over there in the corner with a beautiful blanket and pillow. That's my mat. That's my PEMF mat. I use it every day, twice a day. I use the lower level hurts like seven or eight for sleep. And I use the higher level 22 to 40 for repair, recovery, gut healing. And I've just been just such a huge fan of this. Um, I mean, absolutely love, love, love what it's done for my health. If you want to know more, I tell a little bit about that story in one of my Facebook lives of just one or two ago. You can look in the video page here and find that. Um, and you can see back there, they talk about the mold detox box. See that behind me on the, um, the mantle? That's the mold detox box. So that's back there. If you wanted to know what that is, go to molddetoxbox.com and you can hear more. Oh, you guys, this is so much fun. I could go on for hours. <laughs> um, Kathy, let's see. I'm going to try to get a couple more in before I have to go. Um, anything to do specifically with ochre toxin A? Yes. This is where cholestyramine prescription binder tends to work better than over the counter. Um, I still use clay and charcoal for that, but for ochre toxin in particularly, I think that the cholestyramine is probably your best bet for that. So I would talk to your doctor about getting a prescription um, and using cholestyramine. Um, okay. Oh, thank you, Don. Thanks for your thanks. Well, hey, everybody, I'm going to sign off for now. Please stay tuned because I will be back. I love, love interacting with you. I love answering questions. I know I talk fast, but I'm always hoping I can get double the amount of information in half the time, right? So I apologize for that. This will be recorded so you can go back, maybe put it on half speed so that you can understand everything I said really fast. Um, thank you for taking a few moments to be with me this Friday. Um, I know I can't see you, but I'm sending so much love and healing energy to each one of you. I appreciate every single one of you out there that listens, that supports the stuff that I'm bringing to the world. Um, love your questions and I will be back. So stay tuned for the next one. Have a wonderful afternoon, everyone.